morning to one and all. So dignitaries on the dais, our honorable <coughs> vice chancellor in charge, Professor Tharani Okarasu, and who is uh, <coughs> very dynamic and uh, uh, task oriented academic leader for last uh, several months we have been experiencing his uh, uh, style of work and which is adding so much value to the academic uh, advancement of our university campus thank you sir for your leadership and then uh, thank you uh, for uh, <laughs> accepting our invitation for this uh, uh, wonderful event on our campus. Sir, welcome you for this uh, celebration of International Biodiversity Day. And we have here the Dean uh, School of Life Sciences, uh, Professor <coughs> Pratap Kumar Shetty, sir, and who is again our uh, very active <laughs> academician and a uh, great researcher and sir we welcome you for this program and we have <coughs> head of the department uh, professor ramurthy sir <laughs> and who is always very humble and uh, very cordial to everyone and always uh, with a good smile sir we welcome you for this great event and we have today uh, the guest in the sense, uh, our uh, professor, Padhasardi sir, and then uh, a keynote speaker, and who is uh, again a uh, well-wisher for all of us, and even from tourism department also, we used to take his help uh, on various uh, uh, issues related to uh, ecotourism and ecology, ecosystem, biodiversity on these areas. Sir, thank you very much for uh, accepting our invitation and then um, uh, making presentation on these occasions. So, I you know, take again um, a privilege and opportunity to uh, welcome all the, uh, the professors, the deans, heads of the departments, the faculty, scholars, and students uh, from various departments and uh, we wish you a very, very happy and then uh, prosperous uh, International Biodiversity Day. And with this, I welcome all of you for this, the great event. On this occasion, I would like to uh, you know, mention uh, one important thing that uh, we have taken initiative uh, with the uh, support of uh, you know, the students uh, the students uh, led by the uh, Bhatta Charji and who is you now after us for the last couple of months and uh, now and then he calls and then he visits our office and he's so keen and then uh, very dedicated person and he is after uh, uh, the starting of this uh, Pondicherry University uh, Nature's Club. And I would like to say something about this uh, uh, Nature's Club and when we look at the our campus close to 800 acres where you have a wonderful ecosystem and uh, the great resources, natural resources and it is uh, all about uh, excellent nature's beauty, right? And this beauty, uh, let us know, we are all blessed to uh, know, uh, experience every day in our day-to-day -day working life and when even when you look at the, the temperature, inside the campus you will find less and then the outside is more. So that much difference we can see uh, the, you know, the climate and then even uh, uh, the environment of the, the campus. And with that, we have so many other uh, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, the natural resources, so those resources needs to be protected and preserved and further we need to nurture for the future generations. So here we all have a collective responsibility to not only enjoying these natural resources, let us just uh, preserve and then the promote further uh, no, uh, for the next, uh, no, the coming batches. So all uh, no, the students community will enjoy this natural beauty and resources on the campus. With that, I thank you uh, all the organizers uh, uh, for giving me this opportunity and I wish you all the best for this uh, Nature's Club. Thank you very much.
Now, I would like to call Dr. Pratap Kumar Sethi, Dean of Life Sciences, to the podium for the speech. Good morning to all of you. It's a pleasant morning. And uh, even though it is uh, Agni Nakshatram Katri time, we are, uh, you know, this year we are blessed with a very beautiful weather when the north is uh, sizzling. Therefore, uh, you know, with even in spite of environment being affected, we are able to have some good time. Honorable Vice Chancellor Professor Tarnikar Su, our uh, great senior colleague and, uh, you know, very uh, well-known scientist, Professor Patsati, our friend, uh, Dr. Venkat Rao, head of the department, and, uh, you know, faculty colleagues, students. It's always a pleasure to be part of Pondicherry University campus. I don't know how many of the students have read the book published by the university. I think it was, it was in 2013 or 14, Flora and Fauna of Pondicherry University campus. If somebody, some students have not read, please read it. Professor Parsati uh, has a big role to play in uh, this book which has been brought out. I am one of those people who enjoy the environment a lot. I'm an early riser. I raise along with the plants and, you know, plants and animals. I raise around 4.45. And I have been uh, part of this campus for the last 15 years, exactly 15 years. Every morning I come here for a walk. And, uh, you know, this, uh, I think Professor uh, uh, has just mentioned, our Student Welfare Officer, Professor Rao has mentioned that our campus has a different, uh, you know, environment when compared to outside. I agree with him 100%. Even in the peak summer, we see a little bit of a fog in this campus. Therefore, uh, this uh, beautiful uh, campus, and uh, you know, which is a practical working ground for all the students of this university, because you don't have to do masters in uh, ecology and environmental science to love the nature, because uh, you know it need not be part of your syllabus. Yes, you have it connect with it because somebody, some student is from ecology, but otherwise. If you are a person who loves the nature, it, ir irrespective of which, which subject we are part of it, we should be part of the club, of our uh, nature club. Environment and biodiversity, because we keep hearing this word very frequently nowadays. It used to be, it's one of the most famous one, Vasudeva Kutumbakam. You know, nowadays we talk more politically about it. But philosophically from the Indian point of view, because we recognize life in every diversity of uh, every, you know, every life form, starting from bacteria all the way to plants and animals. Therefore, we also uh, believe, as per our culture, that we are born again. If you're born again, you might be taking any, any form, starting from a microbe, which will live very short, probably a turtle, which lives very long. But however, as the time went, we started losing this uh, diversity we have with us in many fold. And uh, because of changes in the environment, because of the destructive nature of uh, human as such, we started destroying the plant biodiversity first, along with that animal biodiversity and microbial biodiversity went. Before even we even see what that biodiversity is lost, a lot of it has been lost. Therefore, uh, it's, it's apt that we celebrate the biodiversity day to commemorate that, okay, we, what is the importance of this uh, biodiversity day? Any Professor Parsarthi will talk in detail about uh, biodiversity and so on and so forth. But it should be dear to all of us that we should not willingly or unwillingly destroy the diversity of this earth. And now we have already crossed the tipping point, all of you know that, with the changes in the environment, that we have crossed the tipping point that uh, you know, whatever the changes uh, or uh, irreversible changes which used to happen very slowly has come to a stage of disruption today and it is destroying things like anything. Even for example, marine biodiversity is the move which is the most important for us uh, has been also getting destroyed very, very fast. Therefore, it's very nice uh, that, uh, you know, the students uh, and the Department of Ecology and Environmental Science is taking this initiative and along with uh, with the help of the Office of Student Welfare Officer, uh, uh, Student Welfare, that it gets an official seal and also it, rather than getting restricted to one department, now it is a university-wide. Such efforts are always nice and I would congratulate both the department as well as the Student Welfare Office for uh, bringing this together and uh, <laughs> creating this kind of an awareness because now, Government of India, you know that, have made environmental science as part of the subject from beginning itself. 
Therefore, at least people should be aware of what environment is. Otherwise, the only environment we have is the micro environment of telephone. Other, other than that, we are not bothered what happens in and around us. Therefore, people should come out. People should start feeling what is in and around us and also be a part of the change which if not to you know, uh, create something new, at least to uh, retain what we have now or to reduce the destruction to whatever extent, we should become part of it. And this uh, club will create that awareness when people go out, at least they carry the message out and uh, you know, be a part of this movement. Thank you very much and I congratulate everybody on the World uh, Biodiversity Day or International Biodiversity Day. Thank you very much. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Rama Murthy, Head Department of Ecology and Environmental Science, on the stage to say a few words. The time for uh, get uh, heart connection again after uh, a couple of years. The same stage, Honor Vice Chancellor was sitting and uh, my friends and all there. So it is uh, committed to uh, convey you through proper channel. So I just take some three minutes, I hope. Uh, good morning, everyone. Adorn this historical hall all. I am happy to stand before you on this occasion of the Pondicherry University's Nature Club. So I welcome to our Honorable Vice Chancellor, come Director of Studies, Educational Innovation and Rural Reconstruction, Professor K. Tharani Karasu, Professor Etla Venkatarao, a Dean uh, students. He is actually he is uh, Etla Venkatarao. He is act like students. He act always uh, uh, active uh, gentleman <laughs> and. Uh, and, uh, uh, and Professor uh, uh, Pratap Kumar Shetty, Dean School of Life Sciences and uh, Active uh, Scientist, uh, Professor N. Parthasarathy, former HOD and former Dean School of Life Sciences, Department of Ecology and Environment Sciences. This wonderful morning session, we not only celebrate the launch of vibrant and necessary initiatives, but also in commemorate of International Day for Biological Diversity, actually which was scheduled on 22nd, um, this month, uh, Diversity Day. Our affectionate students enthusiastically involved in it to begin this year, 2024. Biodiversity, <coughs> the innumerable varieties of life on Earth which are crucial for the stability and resilience of ecosystems, it, it provides us cardinal resources and services such as clean air and water, fertile soil and stable climate. In spite of the facts, the rapid loss of biodiversity due to human activities poses a severe threat to our planet and future generations. As uh, we have been doing a lot of uh, 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 conducting conferences, seminars, so many things, but still we are unable to maintain the um, minimum sustainability of the bio biodiversity. It's a very tough time for us. At this uh, critical uh, juncture, honorable students have taken initiative steps to uh, mobilize this uh, uh, organization. And uh, in relation to this, for this protection to our uh, planet and future generations, in relation to this, this nature club of our institution becomes indispensable. So it is not just a club, but it is a movement aimed at raising awareness and fostering knowledge and inspiring action towards uh, preservation of our natural world by engaging students, faculties, and the community in various activities like tree planting, wildlife conservation um, project, wildlife conservation project, and environmental education programs. The Nature Club will play a critical role in nurturing a culture of sustainability. I would like to express thanks to faculty coordinators, Professor uh, uh, Sundarabandian and uh, uh, K. Sokumar sir, who care for the students in registering this club. Your guidance and enthusiasm are the concrete step of this enterprise. I convey to the students coordinators that your desire and commitments are truly praiseworthy. I am uh, because uh, uh, we are really it's a burning issue. A lot of things going on uh, 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 war uh, between uh, um, uh, Russia and uh, Ukraine, uh, Russia or NATO. Many things is going on, and uh, it's as a challenge to ruin ourselves. It's a critical question. Under this circumstances, this type of uh, Progressive steps is very good for us. And I convey to the students, coordinators, that your desire and the commitments are truly uh, appreciated. I am confident that through your persistence determination, persistent determination, the club that will achieve its objective, which will lead to a milestone. 
in conclusion together we can make a difference and ensure that our university becomes an illuminator of environmental sustainability by maintaining of harmonious relationships let us salute to our universal india and pray to almighty god and work for its non stopping economic development thank you all now i would like to call dr k siva kumar faculty coordinator department of ecology and environmental science to present the scope of the event thank you sir uh, good morning uh, to all the dignitaries on the dais as well as all of you present in the hall uh, actually we gathered uh, for a good great cause and we are really impressed about the participation of the students in this particular program i could recollect in 1989 i came to this university to collect my first year mark list that time no semester system here only year wise we used to come so when i came i still recollect it was seems to be a barren ground with red soil and a lot of palmera trees used to be here our great professor patasadi sir and ramath sir might be recollecting that and then uh, thanks to the school of ecology who initiated a, some planning that the campus green campus development planning in 1987 and through this planning process uh, with the help of uh, all the vice chancellor including our vice chancellor present he was so uh, very encouraging and was immediately accepted our invitation to have this function so all this we uh, contributed a lot to improve this campus what you see here today it was not there for almost 40 years before so we converted but these changes underwent lot of changes uh, as shetty sir was mentioning in 2010 patasadi sir as well as priya madam uh, published a book one on the plant another on the animals and uh, that book has certain list about 1000 uh, plants and animals species of plants and animals we have it you can see lot of butterfly here of course we have about 100 species of butterfly in the campus actually okay such a wonderful uh, biodiversity uh, we have it and then the department of ecology maybe you may be aware that that department contributes a lot to the uh, country's policy decision the department is the part of the all leading research council of the india uh, starting from the science engineering and research board uh, ugc ministry of earth science and uh, ministry of environment and forest so and plus almost all the policies related to biodiversity the department provide input and moreover we are also a technical advisory to government of tamil nadu government of andaman and government of puducherry we provide all the required information for uh, conserving or keeping the environment good so that we can enjoy our this nature so while doing this of course we have a lot of international program too starting from us fish and wildlife service to european union biodiverse consortium and also recently erasmus program so we do lot but what are we doing inside the home that is the big questions because we have to keep our house out first order then only we can breach others is it so that was the intention so we thought that we should do something because you know this international biodiversity day uh, theme of biodiversity day this year is do be part of the plan that means everybody prepare action plan for various reason whether it's a management or a law or a criminal or biodiversity concern whatever we are all having a policies and guidelines and plans but we left leave the, all those plans that government has to responsible no has to take a responsibility of implementing this plan that's what biodiversity plan also we developed at a global community about 196 members all of you over there we developed a biodiversity plan we fixed the target to achieve on the deadline and that deadline was keep on we are postponing the deadline because we are not giving much attention that's why this year theme was given better to be a part of the plan you and me should be part of the plan so accordingly on that fulfilling that commitment now thanks to the students uh, we are starting the nature club so that we will conserve protect and manage our wonderful biodiversity we have it in our campus that uh, dr patasadi going to talk about that because dr patasadi is uh, 
Really, it is a blessing of the Pondicherry University. Many of you may not be aware, he is an internationally renowned scientist and uh, he is going to retire very soon. But uh, his contribution to the science as well as our campus never uh, no, forgotten. So, thank you, sir, for accepting our invitation, uh, for uh, encouraging our students to be here. I also take this opportunity to mention the Dean Students Welfare. <laughs> because of him only we are here actually. So I think that is the right approach. Actually, our Dean Shetisap was mentioned because now it is institutionalized. It's not belongs to any department. It is belongs to the university. So we are really grateful to our Vice Chancellor for such a wonderful idea. Uh, of course, thank you, our head of the department, as always, a support of you. So we want all of you to be a member of this Nature Club. In fact, all the students, faculty, staff, and research scholar of this university to be a part of this nature club. I think uh, our campus is one of the best campus in the country, which is uh, almost equivalent to IIT, Delhi, and Rurki, because diversity-wise. So such a rich campus, in fact, uh, Pathasad sir was mentioned that it is even matching with one of the international university campus, actually. So such a wonderful campus, we should protect and conserve it. Thank you very much. Now there will be an official release of the name, logo and the newsletter of Pondicherry University Nature Club. Now I would like to invite Professor K. Tharani Karasu, Vice Chancellor, on the stage to grace the audience with few words. Good morning, everyone. Uh, respected uh, Dean of School of Life Sciences, Professor uh, H. Pradap Kumar Shetty, and uh, Dean Student Welfare, Professor Y. Venkat Rao. HOD, Department of Ecology and Environmental Sciences, uh, Dr. D. Ramamurthy, and uh, today's special talk, which will be delivered by Professor N. Patsarthi, and all the faculty members from uh, Department of Ecology and Environmental Sciences, and uh, deans, and uh, uh, faculty from other department and uh, students and uh, nature lovers. Good morning, everyone. So, every era that uh, the concentration of the, sub the importance of subject changes. And uh, when, if you see the uh, 1920s, we were uh, thinking of going for the industrial revolution and uh, you can see there are, we have reached many milestones. The, you can see whatever we can see today here, modern things inside our uh, room also. It started from that uh, 1920s <coughs> or previous, somewhere previous to uh, some major things started in 1820s like this, but uh, the industrial revolution, before that they were, uh, even the knowledge uh, study was there, but still in after industrial revolution only, the, we started uh, disturbing the uh, biodiversity of the earth. Initially, we were discussing about the modern things which gives us comfortness to us. But later on, we started uh, neglecting some of the effect we were doing because of the modernity. 
and now we have reached the st stage where we are not even able to care about uh, the biodiversity how our comfortness will disturb the uh, ecology and the environment of the earth that we have uh, uh, we have almost you know we are not able to uh, interlink even the well educated person also they are not able to uh, interlink the how our comfortness affect the ecology and the environment of the uh, globe earth i can i can quote many uh, uh, example for this for example even the since students are more when you are using the air condition in any of your classroom when you are not switching off your air condition how much electricity is being used you may i saw many students they don't care to switching off ac and leave the classrooms they don't care when they leave the classroom whether the fan is switched off whether the ac is switched off you are not only classroom even at your home when you are uh, when your room also when whenever you are not you in use we we have reached that comfortness where i will pay the electricity bill whatever comes i am very rich or comfortable so i don't care whatever the electricity bill comes i will not switch off when i leave also or let the all the uh, lights are on and uh, i don't bother about whether it is or somebody is in use or not so this is we have reached this stage we don't we uh, even uh, some places 24 hour ac is on also so we have reached that stage where we don't link to generate electricity how much ecology and environment we are disturbing we don't we don't we study ecology separately and uh, we live separately we have become alien to this uh, earth we have reached that stage we don't link uh, how our business affect our uh, environment and ecology and uh, i don't know how many of you know the diesel exhaust from diesel engine is carcinogen it was announced in i told many uh, meetings also it is carcinogen in it was uh, announced by world health organization in 2013 or 14 if i am not uh, wrong but still we use the uh, diesel engine we still uh, we don't bother uh, we don't worry about this so we have reached that much we are all call ourselves that we are all educated but still we are not able to link this so we don't have a concern when i use the diesel engine somebody else will get the cancer we don't have uh, that concern and we still we use this so these are the some of the example you know we we have reached that stage where we are not able to link and uh, leave our comfortness we cannot uh, uh, link these things these to these things and uh, i don't know how many of you from here the who are not ecology and environmental sciences but they want to be the uh, this nature's club can you raise your hands okay only very few so this is the state today this is the state of the uh, the this is truth today so even in, we, i am basically from chemistry so chemical industries are one of the most uh, polluted uh, 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 industry of the environment and uh, we started for the good cause for the human race but uh, at one stage they neglect to see what are the side effects how it affects the environment how it affect the biodiversity we have reached that stage even if you know 
some chemical industry which is affecting the environment and ecology we can't say this we can only write and say but uh, nobody worries they are also human being and we are also human being we are doing harm each other but we have reached that stage so we have uh, addicted to this uh, comfortness so even that is the reason i told you now the we have at present day the when you know the there was a time where the language was uh, celebrated and uh, there was a time culture was uh, celebrated there was some time the even uh, chemistry uh, basic science was celebrated even arts were celebrated and uh, now this is the time where ecology is taking a major role is taking a center stage where it is not only the ecology is not only related to one particular community everywhere even chemistry we started whatever we do in green chemistry that will be very uh, easily publishable green chemistry we started but still we are streamlining whatever we have done already how without affecting the nature how we can do the uh, chemical methods that is called green chemistry even if you take any any anybody is there in uh, english or culture or uh, so in english the eco criticism is very famous and uh, there are many novels which uh, comes out about the talking about the eco criticism how to prevent the ecology that is very famous now so you are all uh, ecology students how many of you know about anthropocene you must be knowing how many of you don't know anthropocene please raise your hand okay very less but still this are all, the this is the there is a big uh a uh, discussion is going on on anthropocene so if you please as a student of ecology please go and read the uh, recent novel by recent novel called living mountain this is totally about the anthropocene so how our nature is being misused or being abused by the industries it is nicely portrayed and it is kind of protest through the uh, through the novels uh, so what i am trying to say is the ecology is not only presently to your department it is important even the policy makers the you must be knowing cop series of cop meeting regarding climate change all those things so it is internationally it is very uh, politically important topic so even in our campus if you take the we have as our uh, earlier speakers mentioned we have uh, 70 acres and uh, we are maintaining a less green campus and uh, but so far uh, we don't have a policy on the there are many sdg goals so we have uh, as a IQ, iqsc coordinators we have initiated some of you may be a member of this uh, uh, for creating this policy for sdg goals and uh, we have framed the F sdg goal for maintaining our campus and one among this is the uh, plastic free campus single use plastic free campus we have already framed the policies it is uh, about to be uh, implemented i need all your cooperation for this i need cooperation in the sense you have to familiarize this with the other students as i told you many of the students other than the assembled here they don't know about ecology they think that it is like the other subject like some other subject to study about is ecology it is not the only study about ecology you have to the familiarize about this and uh, your role as a, a nature club your role is very important so you can plan about 
the how to increase the uh, number of plants variety of plants through tree planting and also you can uh, uh, giving awareness the awareness is the uh, very important role for you now you have to series of awareness programs you have to plan and many of the student it is ignorance only they are doing it they don't know what is the repercussion of this because it is nicely or uh, i don't know they know uh, it is planned in a such a way that they do business without mentioning what is the effect of these businesses. So there are a lot of businesses now has come which affects the ecology and environment and uh, biodiversity loss is the uh, main concern in this but still because of this the uh, because of the business they don't familiarize this. So your role as a nature club is to familiarize this, what is the effect? See, for example, if you take one liter of petrol, 33% of this petrol only converted into energy. All other 67% will go as waste. Go as a waste means as a solid waste or gas waste. And I think it is, we are keep on pumping the 67% of waste into the uh, environment and definitely we will get the different type of disease when we inhale. You know the uh, status of Delhi, the air quality of Delhi, how it is happened, it is all, we are all human created it. So because there is no awareness. So awareness is the one of the important role for the this club. Uh, you plan series of awareness program not only inside the uh, university, outside the university also, outside the campus, go to different colleges, plan, yeah, you need not uh, do many things, only important things where student, once, once you reach to the students, then they will take the messages. So, so what is the, when we use extra electricity, uh, somewhere some, the coal is being burnt excess. So what is the role of coal burning? The, what is the role of electricity generation? What is the role of the minimum electricity usage? What is the role of going for alternative source of energy? What is the role of using LED lab, in, LED bulb instead of the uh, tube lights? All those things you can make the awareness and uh, you can calculate also, it is already there. When we use the LED, how much electricity is less used, but when we use our less electricity and how much the coal burning will be minimized. So you can give then less coal burning means less environmental uh, disturbance. And what is the uh, carbon printings? and what is the, uh, how to reduce the COT emission, what is COT emission, all those things, you know, everything is there, but nobody has the uh, patience to uh, read about this, patience to uh, follow this, because all are in, in the busy world. And uh, the, this era, it is very interesting, earlier, Ignorance because of non-availability of data. But today, ignorance is not because of non-availability of data. Every data is there, but there is no people to tell this, how important this data. So this is your role. I feel uh, the Nature Club is very important club in the present day. That's why immediately I agreed because I visited uh, University of Michigan as a leadership program. There, they said, they have more than 800 student clubs in a university. So we are far behind, we are four or five only. There are a lot of things to be, the university means it is for the students. We are in the next generations. We are all teachers are helping hand only here. So we are minority here, you are uh, majority. You have to take this to the uh, next level. 
take this as a uh, important uh, goal and uh, try different uh, uh, different programs and awareness program especially and i can keep on talk about this because the <laughs> environment ecology <laughs> biodiversity is the hot topic and uh, you are all assembled here to talk about this i uh, really very happy to be part of this and a happy uh, international biodiversity day on this day so uh, they are planning to start this uh, uh, nature club is really a important move it will definitely go in history of uh, pondicherry university in because of this i really happy to be part of this and uh, thank uh, this uh, student welfare office and the department of ecology environment and sciences for organizing this uh, function and uh, thank you one and all thank you professor partha sarthi is an eminent researcher with almost 4 years of experience in plant diversity lion diversity forest ecology and dynamics functional ecology plant taxonomy and conservation he has authored numerous scientific articles that have been published in renowned journals like nature his association with salim ali school of ecology pondicherry university since inception has helped nurture many other prominent ecologists in india now i would like to invite partha sarthi sir on the stage esteemed vice chancellor dean school of life sciences dean students welfare head department of ecology and environmental sciences esteemed colleagues scholars and students it's indeed a pleasure on this special occasion of two day belated in celebration of international biodiversity day biodiversity the taste of biology truly the taste of biology we have been enjoying that benefited through that effectively utilizing and not natural and unnatural and many other means doing it on the other side also resulting in biodiversity loss we all know that extinction is a natural process obviously we have been hastening the process particularly in the recent decades and that has made us to have a great concern on protecting what we have and to what extent they can be on a sustainable manner utilized for the welfare of all the biota nature as i have been indicated and stressed by many earlier speakers is common to all and no more under the domain of ecologists alone that being the realization that should then does draw the responsibility of all sectors and sections in the society irrespective of their absence here these are ground realities with the such realization way back so i shall be briefing about nature of biodiversity we have about half an hour time frame given hence we will not retain all here for a longer period after my presentation i shall still be available after a break for interaction session if you do have any questions or clarifications to have be clarified so biodiversity all of us know that is a product of actually long term evolutionary history it's not seen yesterday not seen today type it is a product of long term evolutionary history in a particular geographical region we do make efforts when their resource potential is realized 
to grow them as cultivated plants or domesticated animals for various purposes ranging from food, fodder, timber, medicinally valued plants and aesthetically interesting and enthusing plant groups of both animals in the parks and uh, plants in the parks and in the nature parks and botanical gardens and animals in the zoos too. That being the nature of the effort that we have been making across the globe, there have been free flow in the past mobility. But quarantine wing once in alert, there have been restrictions in mobility of various organisms across the globe. Biodiversity science as a master's program offered in some countries like Australia, M. Biod, to enhance the effort taken, increase the awareness on the biological organisms. So th with that, such efforts put in by various countries and in the context of India, since the late 80s, there have been greater efforts and emphasis and we have been in that path along with the Center for Ecological Sciences, Bangalore, IISC and PU, Wildlife Institute of India, many other institutes which have subsequently enhanced their effort in making this as one of the important components of learning. And that gains greater importance under the current context of climate change scenario, under the great Anthropocene in the present context, and particularly the extent of a tropical deforestation that has been happening with all the efforts put in by governmental, non-governmental and various other organizations. That goes unfortunately in arithmetic ratio, but deforestation progresses in geometric ratio. These are the realities. So how to cope up with? So documenting biodiversity and the resource values are essential to better understand them and that is very important to have the Bioresources protected for the purpose and inventories have been made finally that database one on the qualitative study of plants and animals and microbes, the other is a quantitative ecological inventory. These inventories have now gone to GLD when it comes to the plant systems, GLD, Global Lionar Database, that with the initiative or the idea what we I had in 2000 had been taken by University of California with the American government funding for roping in the 20 lionologists, then launched the global lion database. And PU has been the pioneer in such efforts. And later, last year, global tree database initiated at our third paper on nature has figured now global facility of biodiversity initiative is in practice and such databases are useful to many people who can make use of the secondary data. Here is the database, the global tree database that was launched and that has a lot of searches in which people can benefit using this as data with respect to the climate change scenario. Lot of such analysis and the effort why we have taken is we have been doing individual research over several locations in the world but a coordination is required, a synthesis of data is required to come up with global patterns and trends. That was the initiative made and to what extent with respect to, one, we talk about the native biodiversity. Second, we use bioresources for the purpose of food, fodder, medicine, etc. Third is, if, if, if we do plant for aesthetic purpose, ornamental plants, from various parts of the world as we witness in our own campus. Fourth is without our invitation, the invasive species. And this paper, third paper in Nature of Us, and these papers have really 
the coordinated effects or efforts of global scientists uh, roped in who have been working for the last three decades and that way native biodiversity when better protected invasive species do not find their addresses anymore that's the message conveyed through this Look at the scenario of biodiversity loss that has been happening. Here is the data of 2022 and 23. Within a year or so, about 20, 000, uh, 2,000 species we lose. When that across the biota groups, they are shown here. And what is shown may be not 100% but the possible extent of scientific effort but these are the realities. We are about 2,000 species on an annual basis are being threatened to the stage of extinction and with such a realization we need to approach a subject. Hot spots were identified which are rich in biodiversity as of today 36 biodiversity hot spots. Way back in 1970s when the committee was constituted to identify areas of high biodiversity and conserv for conservation purpose under the chairmanship of Professor Davis Haywood of Harvard University. 18 identified in enhanced to day 5, 32, 35, now 36th biodiversity hotspot, the Western African forests. These have about the described species range from 0.5 to 50 million, but undescribed, the described is just a fraction of it. When do we describe them? These are the ground realities. There are lot many remain to be described still unknown to science. If not on the higher side of 0.5 to 50 million, at least 1.5 million of the described species, couple of fold of them we still have. Colleagues and scholars and students, let us do realize the fact that there are still areas unreachable, inaccessible. Helicopters are not just like that given to biologists for inventorying purposes. The file gets returned sooner. Don't ask why. So these are realities and they are biodiversity rich areas. The message is we have a lot to be described. Our curricula on the other hand also unfortunately do not match with the giving potential to have the skill to identify them. That needs attention and that has been talked for the last 30 years at the global level. We have been inventorying diversity. Nature is biased in distributing biodiversity across the globe. The temperate systems, if you analyze the patterns of biodiversity from the coldest northern tundra to equatorial tropical regions, the latitudinal gradient of biodiversity low in the higher latitudes as you move towards equator biodiversity increased and I take the example on the Sindh Valley of Kashmir Himalayas low diversity forest just 13 species of trees in large scales of even 50 hectares of Kashmir Himalayan land as compared to just in a hectare about 400 species of trees alone in the Central American forests. In India, uppermost is about 100 species, but it is compensated in the herbaceous diversity. Look at the Titlis, Switzerland, the Alps. This during my LTC in 2013 and this one in 2012 when the dry forest researchers met in the wet zone of the temperate region in Switzerland and Titlis, again low diversity of trees and high diversity of herbaceous plants. I told biodiversity distribution is biased in the natural setting. Why should it be? We need to realize a couple of things. Our students, 
the one sitting here particularly, why not we have temperate region plants to be grown in the tropical regions? Where it can be grown, let it, it will grow and we may fail in many cases. We all of us know Christmas tree. Christmas tree is a natural occurrence is a closed New Zealand down south the temperate rainforest. But that's growing pretty well here. You'll see the pictures and you have seen in front of the management building, in ecology building, in the 90s planted early 2000 to 90, just one centimeter diameter, now about 20 centimeter diameter. To that extent, they can grow pine. We don't have single pine species successfully grown here. Some, the message, we can make an effort, no harm, as long as the species is not harmful to the native region, number one, number two, if it can perform, some can grow, all cannot grow. That is an indication of the ecological plasticity of different species to grow in varied environments other than their native. So, and such environments, so in the tropics, it was one of our lifetime goals, uh, why Pondicherry University biodiversity book has been published only in 2010 during the International Year of Biodiversity. Ever since we joined here, we were all town dwellers in different buildings of the town in Pondicherry. When the university started and the department started, we were all isolated. A field trip to, I call field trip, a trip to university campus will enthuse us like more than Alps trip or anomaly trip. It is to be such a scenic, serene environment all along the East Coast and our own campus, but with the efforts of the administration, particularly horticulture department, we had biodiversity increased by means of various sources. And during when we were busy with our research in Western Ghats, Eastern Ghats, uh, etc. Now, the extent of biodiversity when we talk about the Eastern, Ga Western and Eastern Ghats, Eastern Ghats, almost 50% of biodiversity only as you compare with the count of the Western Ghats. Why? East Western Ghats is geologically much older than the relatively younger Eastern Ghats. We do have an underestimate of scrubs and grassland systems. Do keep in mind they are equally important and as productive in terms of photosynthetic potential as the forest. In forest it goes as wood in carbon sequestered as organic source in wood. Here it goes as food to cater to the larger herbivore populations. So no ecosystem can be underestimated, be it a scrub, tundra or rainforest. The message that I want to convey here while talking about the colder along the latitudinal gradient in the earth is all species can't grow in all places. Certain species with a greater environmental plasticity can be grown and in unless and otherwise they are harmful, they are all fine. All of you hear about eucalyptus issue. Same is the case with the Conocarpus erectus issue. That has been banned in several states now. But in AP, Andhra Pradesh, we have large plantations raised. It taxes on the groundwater like eucalyptus. So we have to be careful with the such species. So in terms of lifetime diversity, trees, climbers, and epiphytes, so you have diversity in terms of biome level, you have diversity at the biodiversity level, and the extent to which various plant groups. If just one hectare of forest, I told, just one to three species in a hectare in temperate forest, but when you compare in the tropics, central Indian forest, just 15 species, east coast of India, about 25 species, Western, Eastern Ghats, Northeast India, and Andamans are the country's most diverse areas. 
and Southeast Asia double of it, Tropical America triple of it and some forests even 400 trees per hectare. Now this is just indicative of biodiversity and when tree diversity or plant diversity is more equal proportion of animal and microbial and other life form diversity. These are the realities. That's why high cry when it comes to Amazon forest destruction. It requires, it does require, of course, political will in conservation efforts because conservation needs to be attempted under legal framework. Across the globe, when our diversity data on trees are pulled, of late, we, biologists have been working, we got answer to the question last year, how many tree species in the globe? 73,000 is the estimate. Actual number is 58,850 species of trees. That was possible when described species count to taken and then the estimate was made. Across, at the one hectare level, across biomes when you compare, tropics more, temperate less, boreal or the coniferous forest the least. That's about the PNAS paper on number of species in the whole of the globe, PU has been the contributor and of 10% of the global data for such efforts. I told that we were in the campus, uh, uh, town and then when we move on to the campus uh, and in the early 90s onward we started uh, looking at in a rough notebook I kept noting down ever since the degree level in, with interest pursued in plant taxonomy and it has been remaining in the rough notebook for several years during when we were busy in other forests of the uh, country and then the initiative in 2009 uh, with uh, uh, just a half a lakh project so flora fauna by me and Dr. Davider colleague uh, and these books published on the International Year of Biodiversity. So, the effort taken, so it's uh, quite some time, several sleepless nights, for two months. It all late evening, late night to early morning to late mornings, but finally through with in February 2011, but 2010 as a year of publication. 567 plant species in the campus, and campus is one of the richest in terms of uh, biodiversity and uh, we have several portions of the campus still under naturalness. The tropical dry evergreen forest, dry evergreen scrub, tropical savannas and the thorn forest and uh, there are a lot of flowering plants and ferns uh, too and uh, among the various groups and some of the changes that are happening over the time, I don't go to the details of it, you have important tree species, the neem, the palmyra, and the endemic species, the snake plant, Sensevieria, which is medicinally valued. And couple of uh, climber species and grass species. Uh, of course, nowadays, uh, we do have some of the, uh, the, many of the faunal communities which are dependent on these. Some of them are of medicinally valued species. Although we do not make harvests, but there are a number of plant species which are of uh, important medicinal value. The book organized into wild and naturalized uh, plants in the first part. The second part is the cultivated plant species. And some of them, this plant in the mid-90s we found, it was known earlier only from the Western Ghats. Now, these local forests do have, and we have planted in our campus also, and successful. And this is the tree which is used for make matchstick is from Ailanthus excelsa. So there are a number of plant species of high value. Of course, the cashew, the neem, bamboos.
There are a number of places wherein people try to attract and collect money as oxygen parks. Bamboos are one of the important resourceful species which emit greater oxygen level. All ficus species and bamboos and hence oxygen parks, they plant row of these plants from entry to exit stage. You are allowed to for about an hour and then they collect fees. So, Palms are important for the palm civet native mammal Maranoi here and their natural food is the palm fruit right now in the fruiting stage. Male and female separate and these are the natural resources and between the lecture hall complex and biotech there are group of palm trees yesterday evening when we were taking on a walk with our students. It's a natural patch of uh, such palm trees, and these support a lot of uh, faunal communities. Sometimes you may not see them because they are nocturnal in nature. They move in the night when we snore. This plant I should make a particular mention about. We have this on the campus, Carmona. The leaves are small, about 1.5 centimeter long, so rough, but an important medicinal valued plant the worst case of allopathy doctor, hand washed case of jaundice, cured by this plant, a wet paste of it in buttermilk by traditional healer. That lady, old lady is still alive. Many doctors wonder and even normal people, if they take preventive measure, they can have. This is an important medicinal plant, Carmona retusa, with rough leaves. These are some of the hidden resources. But there is a general human weakness. Once told about the importance, they finish it off. This is one of the human weaknesses and hence the cry about conservation. Whenever collected, do not root it out. Take what is required and particularly the seeds and roots when they are the propagating material do not collect all portion of it root carefully part of it you take assessing the population the red jamun very delicious in our own campus and in the opposite eucalyptus plantation opposite to chemfab like our jamun novel this is red jamun very delicious medicinally valued but not researched much ficuses the ficus hispida. You see here, one fine night on a rainy day we observed, the whole leaf is converted into a lace on the right side, you see, by this fellow, moth larva. Two hours it took, we videographed it. It's its food. Butterflies or moths are so colorful, but at the larval stage, they gregariously feed on these natural resources. See the entire leaf converted to a lace to our time frame. If these species are not there, where will they go? You are not going to pay their Ashok Hotel bill, and they don't want to come there. These are the realities. The endemic palm we have on the campus, Tani palm, Remember, this is endemic only to the Coromandel Coast. We don't have anywhere in the world. Its fruits are edible. And these are pollinated by bees and dispersed by birds and small mammals. And the fruit, the seed of it is a medicinally valued. It doesn't occur anywhere beyond this southern east coast stretch. These are the realized male and female. Very many climbers and this root is adulterated in the country medicine shop with Glyceraisa root, Adi Maduram. But this also has the property you can't make out unless anatomy section is taken. Cancer, medical world talks about it. Based on the distribution of this plant, Pyrinacantha volubilis, male and female, look at the leaf crop. This is a very important medicine for cancer, the fruit. The fruit is very delicious. We can eat it in the local forest. Based on the distribution of this species, UAS 
University of Agricultural Sciences, Bangalore professor, has researched on it that medicine is about to come out stage. So we have a number of such resources we, uh, on the campus uh, which are valuable, Shatavari, asparagus, uh, which is again of uh, uh, value in terms of medicinal purpose. Tondaman, we heard of Tondanadu, Tondai comes from Adondai plant, Keparis xylanica, we have on our campus medicinally valued too. Hemidesmus indicus, Sarasaparilla, Nanari, for breast cancer and breast problem, wild jasmine is used and during this season it flowers and flowers have a lot of medicinal value. Parrots, their favorite food is for rose ringed parakeet, fruit pulp of this particular climber, Rivia hypocratery farmis, and the flowers are pollinated by the atlas moth in the night time, the big moth, white flowers. So look at the connections of plants and animals. There are a lot of natural mutualism which we may not see because they are active in the night. People have one side headache, migraine. The fruit peel of it in boiling gingerly or sesame oil is an excellent cure for migraine. This is Koratan, they locally refer. This is a cooker bit, ugly looking maybe inside, but the peel is used. And this is the wall of our department on the other side, abutting biochemistry. And this is of importance in terms of the peel being used but dispersed by bats in the night time. Lantana we all know about, the invasive species, but many birds spread that. But lantana can also be used as an important pesticide. Weeds don't consider as weeds. Dr. Ram, our colleague, was talking teaching about the weed ecology and uh, many students benefited in terms of understanding about the weedy species on the campus and the leaves of this potentially be used as a pesticide. So we need to be wiser in handling uh, the kind of uh, invaded species in the process you can eliminate. We buy blueberry, uh, cranberry, etc. for about uh, couple of, uh, you know, 400 rupees, uh, 100 grams like. This fruit of Zizifas, a thorny climber, is of very good value when it comes to the stomach problems as good as blueberries. You know, naturally animals do feed on. We have veterinary department for the pets only, not for the natural animals. They live to their life. So, fungi, following few rainy days, colorful fungi, various species, yesterday we were, just a few days only it rained, yesterday we could see couple of tree holes, lot of fun, fungal species and couple of them, see how colorful they are, they are important food source to a number of slugs and snails. So. And some of the species were described from this region to science. Look at them. Now some of these species do not occur in front of biotech on the roadside itself, the coral fungus. Green carpet you see on the floor, it's magnified, it's a bryophyte, leafy bryophyte. And just under high power of microscope if you observe, several rotifers feed on the algae attached to this particular mass species. It's an important, interesting observation. There are a lot of minute things that skips our eyes. Plantations of various trees we have on the campus and we have a number of cultivated species. Cultivated species have an advantage of from elsewhere they are being brought here and they add obviously to the aesthetic value. You know, that cannot be measured. Certain things can't be measured in terms of money value. It's 
quality oriented and hence just to have an idea about such ornamental plants. I was talking about the Christmas tree. See in front of uh, the various buildings, our department in front of management etc. And now they have really grown, remained undisturbed. You know how much can be the growth potential and we don't know whether they grow to this extent even if it's in its own native. So, these are some of the uh, ways by which this tree, uh, students can note that this is in our department on the right, uh, right side, but that has really grown now. And these are the ways by which some species cope up. And this is uh, mostly used in the uh, flower bouquets. I draw attention to the last one, uh, the magnolia plant that is native of beyond New Zealand, temperate rainforest species can grow well in the biotech garden of our uh, Pondicherry University. On the left side, what you see is, uh, it took so many years uh, for us to identify, this is endemic to Panama and Cuba. When I received the Panama flora, there I found this is Rondelesia of coffee family. So, so interesting, but it grows pretty well here. So, some can, but efforts when made, unless harmless, it's fine. It adds to the knowledge. Yesterday evening, we saw this in biotech back. Sankupushpam, all of us know, is a climber. I mistook, I mentioned here is a tree, scandent tree I mentioned. It's scandent to such an extent it grows as a climber. Biotech back has its own naturalness and true line of form. In a palmyra plant half dead, when a seed fell in it, it has formed its life and that has become an independent plant now. So to this, that means seeds are also viable and this plant is native to native uh, this is native to brazil only peru and brazil but how come we have these plants sankupushpam we know as a climber but this has now horticulture department that way has introduced the second place i saw in the country i have not seen anywhere other than our campus and in tiruvallur veeraragava temple as a temple plant. I was surprised who would have planted it like. So, but this is a, a climber plant and it's truly a climber on the back of biotech. Uh, the uh, badminton ball tree, parkia in the hostels, night bats are active and they are pollinators. Palms. Palms, various species we have on the campus and many of the plants we grow also as uh, hedge plants. Caution, unknowingly we are growing all over the country one leaf through ticket for a kid. One leaf, so poisonous but we are growing everywhere, not only in our campus but uh, it has become an art a horticultural attractant to grow as a hedge plant, poisonous to children. Sometimes ignorance is a blessing. If we don't know, well, we don't touch it. Our students ask, oh, how many leaves for us? I said, leave your number and then it's up to you. Certain species we had, now we do not have. And some of them is medicinally valued species, what you have. The Samula Arishta is a famous drug in Ayurveda. One of the plants we have as weed in our campus and Peraskia blio we do not have any more in the campus and Sudapanax from the temperate region of New Zealand in the hot silver jubilee campus growing very well. See the contrast of them, some of them performing well in our campus. So it has been a botanical treat to study biodiversity on the campus. Look at that. We do not have any more, but this is endemic to New Zealand. I use the word endemic, not reported outside New Zealand, but our campus had. This is the rose cactus in front of uh, uh, ecology building we had and uh, Peraskia blio. So this is brief about uh, the flora, fauna. You have a number of species listed out. Over the decades, our students 
there are a lot of specialities of ecology students now of course environmental science also added they also seem to be equally interested in ecology in one of the vivas i asked how do you justify your degree in environmental science your work thesis is ecology that indicates their interest there need not be a line drawn sharply so the reason the pu had them together is let them benefit that was the idea so coming to fauna over the year decades students have prepared the list our colleague priya davidar uh, published ultimately as a form of a book and rich in butterfly species various species of butterflies which are dependent on the many of the floral resources larvae young stage leaf eaters and the floral stage when it comes to nectar of various uh, flowers reptiles are also <coughs> equally important and this is quite common in the sandy regions and a couple of them are endemic species also skinks quite common in sandy areas snakes uh, always are stu among student community whenever there is a danger of snakes call will come to our department we direct them to help and they also demonstrate to students how to distinguish poisonous and non poisonous types so we have both of them one has to be careful avi fauna is very interesting and they play important role in the functional ecology of a campus biodiversity so as talking about uh, the common parrot is making use of the fruits of many species including the cultivated uh, species uh, nuts owlet the tree pie quite common babblers are very common in guru growing in the seven as groups sunbirds are important pollinators of many of the tree species in the campus we have three species of them jackal of course nowadays we don't spot them much but they are very much there mongoose of course the palm civet you see here that was a photograph in our quarters terrace so with the two young ones so campus has been supporting a number of wild fauna you see the palm civet and the small indian civet the various fruits they ate and when they defecate you see the seeds of them and this is how they help indirectly in dispersing the seeds of various plant species bats are important dispersers of several spe species biodiversity as i told native or introduced we can't see them as independent entity they have link with the soil to grow and fauna in terms of pollination and dispersal of seeds in togetherness we need to see and some of them in the natural setting when the plants are stratified animals use such a stratification and in the campus they remain to be still detected maybe some natural areas on a comparative manner for exercises in the nature club can be to what when forest setting is such that what could be the local minor setting here so these are some of the avenues available for class exercises uh, well uh, in the natural setting uh, when the lion tied make, us, make a, uh, use of root resource i talked about this already in two hours time they convert we studied 110 plants and the resources they use and that in the from the campus first science paper arose last year many teams of people studied <laughs> i'll tell you pu has made so much efforts and has been mapped globally our students over the 37 batches from alaska to new caledonia they are spread over so that uh, the dr shukmar was mentioning about uh, and uh, that goes to the credit of pu the entire setup of administrators faculty scholars and students it's not one man's effort this is the effort we have proved that each team took five plants and the insect herbivore is studied for three seasons before covid completed the work after covid first science paper for pu 
teams of people, three Indian teams involved. One from Gujarat, one from Bangalore, one from PU, and the remaining 500 teams equally five numbers of species across the globe. This is a global synthesis paper on what governs plant herbivory. PU was one of the sites for the study. So, it's there is a saying in Tamil, Murti Siridu, Kirti Peridu. It's not the size alone that matters. Many things matter. The larva, the adult, the larva, the adult. So at that stage, leaf eater, at that stage, nectar feeders. So they need to have, this stage is longer, that stage is shorter. Biodiversity has to be looked from the angle of, together their setting of climate, soil, plants, growth features, and animal association together as a bioresource when we use on a sustainable basis. Between 20 and 90, Western Ghats protected area itself last 40% of its cover. Where do we go? Rates of species loss is getting greater and greater. Even steep slopes in Kohli Hills are not spared. That was a concern we expressed in our first nature paper in 2012. Extinction, I told, is a natural process, but we shouldn't be hastening the process because we depend on nature. Nature need not depend on us. So, but it's our prime duty. If not for anything, let biodiversity be protected in the selfish interest of our own survival in years to come and leave it for generations to enjoy biodiversity and bioresource. With such a conservation message, let us be part of it, use resources on a sustainable basis. Sustainability concept, permanent account, take the interest alone, don't touch a principle. Like the work, cork, work, oak tree, cork, bottle cork, they harvest by cutting across the bark, stripping off the outer bark. Next harvest after a couple of years, that much, next year, inner bark will produce. That is the sustainable. You don't kill the tree, harvest only the bark. This is the message of sustainable resource use and campus conservation, as our earlier speakers have been mentioning about the importance. We have vast expanse of campus. We thoroughly enjoyed the 38 batches of, uh, 37 batches of students, 38, the, we are, waiting to welcome and with the involvement of entire setup of administration, faculty, scholars, staff and students, such efforts are possible. It's a great place to academia and the air that you enjoy here. As our colleagues have been mentioning, when you get down from the car or bus stop, walk to the campus, sharp difference. Enjoy that. Don't miss it. Don't sleep over time. So the beauty should be enjoyed. Uh, taking a walk around it, and that way we can make, uh, and over the 15-year gap of a campus flora, some have vanished, new have come up, and that can be tracked, number one. Faunal association to be studied, stratification to be recorded, phenology already initiated with the tagged individuals, and conservation thus is a holistic approach program, not in individual entity. Thank you very much for your patient hearing. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir, for your invigorating and thought-provoking words. Um, now we have Nature Lens Prize Distribution. Before that, we would like to show the beautiful captures from nature. So we are going next to the distribution part. I would like to invite Vice Chancellor to, to honor the winners. So first is the mobile category. Second runner up comes Aditi.
Good afternoon to all. So uh, it's a indeed pleasure to put up thanks for this event. So first of all, I thank our Vice Chancellor, officiating Vice Chancellor, Professor Tarni Karase. When we approached him regarding the recognition of Nature Club, immediately they accepted, number one. The second is when we wanted to inaugurate that club as in addition with our association with the Bio International Biodiversity Day. In his busy schedule, he accepted and he came and give our valuable thoughts to us. That is a very important. He stayed until the end of the function. That is also another important thing. We need to thank, express my sincere gratitude on behalf of myself and on behalf of our department and Nature Club. Thank you very much, sir.